This video is brought to you by the good folks at KEH. Not only is KEH the oldest and biggest at what they do, buying and selling exclusively used camera gear of all sorts since 1979, but they do it well with integrity and both a 180-day warranty and 21-day return policy, free shipping on orders of $75 or more. Which is why, because they make it as futz-free a process as possible, they are our go-to whenever we are looking to fund new purchases by selling our own gear or buying that special used piece of kit properly graded and checked when we want to go quirky or old school. Check them out using the special links and 5% discount or bonus code in the video description below. Thank you, KEH. History is so easy to forget. Heck, we've got some politicians intent upon passing legislation making it illegal to remember, and too often we are the poorer for it. But sometimes, especially if those memories are rooted in childhood or any other particularly critical moment in one's development, something as simple as the aroma of a hot bowl of chicken soup, a piece of music, or a photograph, maybe the sight or feel of a long forgotten camera which captured that photograph, can catapult that memory back into one's consciousness with a, if we're lucky enough, sense of joy, euphoria, maybe just a quiet smile, possibly deep reflection. And then there are times when we couldn't possibly have those memories because we weren't there or weren't yet born. Oh well. Funny thing about that, though, because if we can retain our childlike curiosity into adulthood and one day come across a concretization, a physical embodiment of one of those moments, whether we were there or not, like this mid-1960s Pentax Spotmatic, a talisman, really, the way I think about it, we can be transported to a time and place we've never been before and truly, maybe forever, become the richer for it, expanded by it, if only we make the effort to place it in its proper context, hold that thought. Hey everybody, I'm Hugh Brownstone for Three Blind Men and an Elephant. And right, many of us will have immediately recognized that clip as a trailer to the Beatles' first film, 1964's A Hard Day's Night. But what does that have to do with a half-century-old 35mm film SLR? Glad you asked. In 1964, as the Beatles arrived in America for the very first time, Beatlemania was already a thing in the UK, the boys brought with them Pentax cameras very much like this one. Upon returning to the UK, they began filming A Hard Day's Night, which I think absolutely captures the spirit and energy of their phenomenal rise, fueled not only by who they were and what they created, but who we were and what we needed at the time. Hold that thought. Although before I continue, a quick tangent. Hard Day's Night served as the inspiration for a much more recent movie I also love, Tom Hanks' 1996 directorial debut, That Thing You Do. Anyway, late last month, June 27th to be precise, an exhibition of never-before-seen images taken by Paul McCartney at that time, called Eyes of the Storm, opened at the National Portrait Gallery in London. Think of it as a view of Beatlemania from the inside out. For anyone who loves film photography, music, history, social movements, whatever, notice that the one common denominator is love because love is all you need. It is a must-see. I'm trying to figure out how to make the time for us to get there. I remember the very first moment I ever heard the Beatles, ever heard of the Beatles, and it changed my life forever. I was in first grade, playing catch after school in the middle of the street with my friend in front of his house, when his sister started screaming that the Beatles were on the radio. Caught up in the moment, we dropped what we were doing and rushed in to see what was going on, only to arrive as the song ended. But just those few seconds, that was enough. In that moment, I felt I was witness to becoming part of something extraordinary, extraordinarily exciting, extraordinarily hopeful, joyful, extraordinarily wonderful. Today, well more than half a century later, I want to see McCartney's images in person, larger than life, because that moment, that ensuing change was so profound, so profoundly good. But it's never as simple as that, is it? Because those two thoughts I asked you to hold, the notion that their meteoric rise was fueled not only by who they were and what they created, but who we were and what we needed at the time, that 
We can be transported to a time and place we've never been before and truly, maybe forever, become the richer for it, expanded by it, if only we make the effort to place what it is that we are seeing in its entirety, in its proper context. Well, for now, just two things. Three things. Four. Okay, only four things. First, Beatlemania arrived in the U.S. when I was seven years old and only dimly, if at all, frankly, aware that our country was still mourning the death of our president, John F. Kennedy, just months earlier. Second, the Beatles arrived one year before the passage of the Civil Rights Act, two years before the passage of the Voting Rights Act, both signed into law by President Kennedy's successor, Lyndon B. Johnson. It was an era of profound social change. Don't really know what that's about? Then take a look at this the thinnest of historical slices that tells you a lot about the country back then and what love is all you need can really mean. We go to America, we're down in the southern states, and we suddenly get told that we've got to play to a segregated audience. That's the way we do it down here. What, you mean the black people in one bit and the white people in the other? We say, no, we don't, we don't do that. So we just refused to, and we said, no, we're not going to play unless it's a non-segregated audience. And it was a lovely story. Later, there was a girl, a black girl, who went to the concert. So she's sitting amongst all the white fans, and they're all just loving the show, and they're screaming and everything. And she said, I've never sat with white people ever before. She said, and here they were, we're like friends. And we're all like loving this group. For me, I think that was very emotional. It still is. Third. President Johnson was, on the other hand, also responsible for sending the first U.S. combat troops into battle in Vietnam that same year, 1965. By 1967, we'd have half a million U.S. troops there, 382,000 of them conscripted in that year alone. Massive anti-war demonstrations back here in the U.S. It was a moment in history perhaps best captured by another band, an American band called Buffalo Springfield, when they released For What It's Worth. Of course, there was so much more to come from the 1968 Nixon Agnew ticket winning the White House, to the disgrace and resignations of both of them just six years later, but that is another story, perhaps, for another time. But see how the cross-currents of history and memory can intersect in such extraordinary ways, again, if we only choose to see them? This is a short video. Let's wrap it up and bring it back to the here and now. For those of us who cannot get to the National Portrait Gallery, there are other options, beginning with a virtual tour of the exhibition courtesy of the National Portrait Gallery. It's available for free on smartphones via the Bloomberg Connect app. And of course, there is so much coverage of the exhibition, including more interviews with Sir Paul right here on YouTube. Just search for him. But then you might want to go at it by picking up your own time machine like I have, a vintage 1960s Pentax for yourself. We're talking about what, 250 bucks, including the 51.4 Super Takamar lens I just showed you? Then going out, shooting with it on your own schedule, in your own time, I recommend Tri-X and Channel. As you cock the film transport lever, bring the camera up to your eye, manually focus the lens while looking through that single lens reflex viewfinder and tripping the shutter, the spirit, the wonder, the improbability of it all, the same kind of tactile sensation and viewing experience of a 21-year-old lad from Liverpool, living a life unthinkable just a few years earlier, about to embark on another life altogether. Just imagine. A big shout out to KEH for sponsoring this video, a great resource for finding just this kind of gear. Check them out using the special links and 5% discount or bonus code in the video description below. Thank you, KEH. If you like what you've seen here today, please give a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, join the conversation in the comment section below because this is an exceptional audience. If you'd like help with a portfolio review, gear selection, finding or honing your artistic voice, sign up for a one-on-one -on -one mentoring video call via Zoom at 3bmep.com slash booking. Finally, please consider supporting our work by using the no cost to you affiliate links down below sending us coffee money via PayPal, or most especially, joining us on Patreon, links down below as well. However you choose to support us, as always, we thank you.